people, hey, I'm a Christian. It was placed there to remind me. Amen. And that's the same thing you need to set up in your lives as the Lord delivers you across these Jordans, across these rivers of trouble. You need to set up, hey, and remember what the Lord's done. Because if you don't, when these times come up, you're going to fall. All right. David said, I reminded myself in the Lord and what the Lord has done for me. He remembered what the Lord had done for him in them battles. And he was in these dry lands. What if God said, go back and get the bricks? He didn't tell them, you know what? When they took them rocks out, they took them stones out of that river, right? The problem is today is God forgives us, but we don't forgive ourselves. And when we go across this river, as, as Jesus Christ did for us, and we go across this and He forgives us, we don't forgive ourselves. And a lot of times when we don't forgive ourselves, He didn't tell the children of Israel, hey, I want you to go back to Egypt while the, while the priest is standing in the river and go get the bricks that you made in Egypt and come back and bring on this side. He didn't tell you to go get your past and bring back across the river. He said to get the stone out of the river that He moved the dry land for. And if you get them stones up and you look at that right there, a lot of times we don't remember ourselves of what we did in our past. Let's go on to point two right here. We're to pass it on to our generation that is coming to the now generation. Well, let's think about this. In verse 24, it says that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that it is mighty that you might fear the Lord your God forever. Think about this. You set these things up. My son has to come out that house and pass that cross daily too. Does he not have to go sit there and hey, what the Lord Jesus Christ done for me too? Even though I put that there for me to remember for what the Lord done for me, everyone that walks down that road are going to remember memorial of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you. Amen. And the same thing is when the men took this cross right here, down the road Easter time, that was a memorial for what the Lord Jesus Christ had done. Yes. And what He had done in our lives. And let's thank it here. The stones were set for the upcoming generations to learn from. They were set there to learn from. If we don't take these things that set out in front of us to learn from them. And we don't pass it off to the not the, the new generation, but the now generation. Right. Each one of these children, each one of these youth that's sitting here is the now generation. Yes. And if we don't set forth and raise them up in the way they should go, then they're going to depart from it. But if we set it up, set these stones out like they did had Joshua do, then it will remind them on the way they should go. The only reason that it failed is because the old timers passed away. Right. And the new, the new generation coming on, they didn't have these memorials. Right. These memorials didn't mean nothing to them <laughs> of what they stood for. The same thing as we have Memorial Day today for our fallen soldiers in war for our freedom. Think about this. It's the same thing Joshua did right here in this river. He set stones up to remind you where God had brought you from. Yes. He didn't set you to set bricks up from where He brought you out of Egypt, from where He delivered you from bondage. Think about this. If we'd have done this in the past, would there have been in 1962, would prayer be banded? If we'd have really done this? No. In 1963, would Bibles, reading in schools be outlawed? No. 1980, would the Ten Commandments be against the law and have it in a public school system? No. In 2000, no more prayer on the PA systems at ball games? No. Because they would fear the Lord thy God Amen. for what He's done. That's right. God was teaching Israel, don't let society dictate your values. As these men gave their lives on the battlefields, 
for our freedom. We're to stand in, the, in, the, stand in these gaps with the Lord thy God and set these stones out in front of us and teach our generation on the way they should go and the way they should act, the way they should live. Think about this. If we have did this as ourselves as families and raised our children the way God's Word says, we wouldn't be in the shape we are now. Right. Amen. But the problem is the church house. You've got 20% workers and 80% sinners. Right. It just don't, just don't revolve in here. If the problem's happening in here, why do you think you're getting the results out there? If you think about this, if you've got 20% of the church working and 80% of them are sitting, ain't nothing getting done inside the church but running people down. That's exactly the right. same thing that's happening with America today. The church being the body of Christ. You've got the body, you've got the hands moving, but the arms ain't. Right. You've got the feet moving, but the legs ain't. How are you going to accomplish it? If we don't fear the Lord thy God. Yes. He's the same God we serve as the God that brought them across that Jordan River. Yes. The same God. And it's just as much as Memorial Day for what the Lord Jesus Christ did for each and every one of us as the soldiers that laid down their lives. If not, it's more important than what the, what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Because what the Lord Jesus Christ did for each one of us was permanent. Yes. And it was permanent. When you see that cross, let it be a memorial to you on what the Lord Jesus Christ did. He took the wages of sin and rested on His shoulders for each one of us. Yes, thank you, Jesus. What we couldn't do ourselves. A man that came here in the flesh, God in the flesh, God in the garment, come here and walk perfect and not even a sin. Something that me and you can't do. That's right. And buried his cross. Shed his blood on this cross. Not we didn't take his life. He laid down his life. That's right, amen. And if you're sitting here today and you're not a saved child of God, and you look at that cross right there, and it doesn't have a memorial to you, you're an enemy to God. If you're not a saved child of God in this house, you are a rebel to God. Yes. He says, if you're not with me, you're against me. That's right. That's what God's Word says. God's Word says, and without me, you can do nothing. That's right. Well, I'm going to go to the third point of this here. The third point right here is goodbye to the past. By when they placed them stones out of that river and set it up, and them priests stepped out of that river, what happened? The river went back to the river the way it was. It was a closed chapter. Right. Why in the world, if the Lord Jesus Christ saved you, why in the world are you sitting there letting your past haunt you and stopping you from the walk you've got to walk with Jesus Christ? That's right, amen. He gave His life for you on that cross. And when He's the blood shed down that cross, dead people got up and walked. That's the power of the blood. Nothing but the power of the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes. Why are you carrying that burden? Right. Why are you carrying? Why are you want to go back across that Jordan River and get the bricks that they were delivered from? Right. Why do you want to go back and pick that bottle of alcohol up that you was delivered from? Right. Why do you want to go back and pick up that pill that you was delivered from? Because yes. I'll tell you what God's Word says. God's Word says it's coming back sevenfold. Do you want that to come back sevenfold? I don't think so. Because I couldn't handle it the first time. That's right. They took Amen. the blood of Christ. Yes. And that's what you have to have is the blood of Christ. If you're sitting in God's house tonight, and you today, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, hey, the stones have been set. He says it is finished. And He gave His life for each and every one of you. You can walk out this door if you want to. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. If you're sitting here and you're not a saved child of God, you walk out these doors. And I assure you, if God calls you home 
And you're not saved. This message that I'm preaching to you right now will run through your head over and over and over while you're in a torment of hell. That's right. That's what the Word of God says. That's not what I said. Take it up with Him. Yes, people's going to talk. Let them talk. People's going to talk. Let them talk about your past. Yes. God has forgiven you of your past. Yes, thank you, Jesus. The burden has been lifted. Yes. In Galatians, God's word warns us, don't go back to the yokes of bondage of what you've been delivered from. That's right. For the Christ the Lord delivered you from it. Yes. And when you see that cross, you know that you don't have a past. You know what the Lord Jesus Christ done for each and every one of us. Yes. He said, I will forgive you. If you're faithful and you really ask for forgiveness, don't come up here and play games. That's right. He's not in the game playing business. That's He's right. in the life saving business. Yes, amen. And there's no room for life in the life saving business for game playing. That's right. Because I'm going to tell you, the Lord thy God sees right through your fakeness. That's exactly. He sees right through it. Yes, He does. Don't play good games with God. I'm serious. He gave His life. For your freedom. A freedom not to sin. Not a freedom to sin. That's right. Not to take a, a, a saving grace card and run around town and if God will forgive me, I'll just do what I want to do. The Word of God says God forbids. That's right. God will for, forbid that. Listen to the convictions of the Holy Spirit. But if you're sitting in God's house right now, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and your Lord thy God. Don't leave here today not knowing. Amen. It could be the last time that you go across that threshold. It could be the last time that you get to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. The good news. So many times we sit and so many times we'll think, hey, I'll get that next chance. I'll get that next chance. Well, when you picked up the paper this morning, you read them obituaries, do you think they might have got that next chance if they didn't get it? God don't promise tomorrow. That's exactly But right. He promises salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance, a turning away from. Yes. That's what my God promises. Amen. Are you going to walk out again today and deny Jesus Christ there's your memorial. This cross right here. Think about this. He gave it all. So yes, you could have it all. Yes, He did. Amen. That's my King. That's my King. I want you to think about this. I'm going to even go back to my own, my Lord's words. Right here. I'm going to turn right back over here to John real quick. John chapter 5, verses 5 through 6. Don't let your past hold you back. There was a man laying by the pool of Bethesda, laying there, couldn't walk. What did the Lord ask him? Let's see right here in verse 5, 5, 6. It says, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity. 30 and 8 years. He'd been sitting there 38 years by that pool that couldn't walk. Laying there. Laying there in his past. It says, when Jesus saw him lie. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had not, he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Amen. He's saying to you today, Will thou be made whole? Amen. Are you sitting there laying down in your past for 38 years like this man was? Sitting there looking at the water. But here comes the good part. The impotent man answered to him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming another step down before me, He's saying, I can't get nobody to help you. About like some people saying, I can't get a ride to church because I can't come to church. You can, you can walk down to church. 
I'm telling you, he was making excuses. Christians do not live on excuses. 